righty. Now we are live on Facebook. It's already seven o'clock. So thank you everybody for coming to another one of our of virtual events. And this time we are really thrilled to have our good friend, Aaron from G Adventures. Welcome, Aaron. Uh, we just absolutely love this co uh, company. You know, it's, it's a Canadian um, bragging story. And uh, to think that he just started off at Bruce in, in Calgary and uh, the success that he's brought this company and what you stand for for traveling. I was so fortunate to go to Morocco with you guys and that was a life-changing experience. So we're really happy that you have us. Um, so my Susan Walker with Expedia Cruise is here, of course, here in Red Deer and uh, I am the franchise partner. And uh, with me, I have Jordana who's in charge of uh, the background stuff. So Jordana's with me, Christine, Chris and Carol and Craig is with us and Phil uh, has just joining us as well. So thank you. So without further ado, I will let you take it away, Erin. That's great. Thanks so much, Susan. And thanks everyone for tuning in. I'm really excited to be presenting for you tonight. It's always great to talk about travel. And we are seeing that um, people are starting to get themselves organized for, for bookings into 2022. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We hope that this gives you lots of travel inspiration. And uh, my goal is to add to your bucket list. <laughs> so if you've been to all these countries that I'm going to talk about tonight, congrats. You've had a a life of adventure. Um, hopefully there's some here that you haven't yet been to or that you haven't even thought about. And, and that's really what we're here to do is to inspire you with stories of travel. So my name is Erin. I've been with G Adventures now for coming up on 16 years. I'm really excited to share with you some of my personal experiences. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about kind of who we are and what we do at G Adventures. So we are the world leader in small group adventure travel. Um, what that means is that we build our tours to, to focus on adventure. So there is a little bit of physical activity, um, but that might be just walking around some of these sites. We always want to make sure that there's some cultural inclusions and we want to get you outside and exploring all these uh, amazing destinations around the world. Um, our groups are really small. So when we say small, we say about an average of 10 or 12 people. Some of our tours are as few as six. Others are as big as 18, which is still not a very big group. So really nice way to explore the world. We employ local guides that are from the destinations that you've chosen to travel to. Um, so this in this case, actually, uh, a couple shots here of Jordan, one of our popular destinations. And this is Ayman. He's been working with us for quite a few years now. And he's there to share his personal stories with you, to tell you all about the history, to answer questions on the culture, uh, to work as your built-in best friend who is there to translate menus, to explain things that you've never seen before or never heard about, and also to make sure that the logistics of the tour run really smoothly. So the charm in having a local guide, of course, is that they know the ins and outs of these destinations. They can take you to places that you wouldn't even hear about in reading through a guidebook, and they're going to give you uh, their personal stories. So it's a really, um, really nice way to travel in the small group experience. The accommodations that we choose are always local, so they're always centrally located, clean and comfortable. Um, we work with property owners to maintain high standards in terms of health and hygiene, which is really extra important right now. Um, but we also want to make sure that the properties are unique. We want you to stay in a place that you wouldn't be able to stay in at home. We want it to look different than the hotel down the street. And you'll find lots of charm included in the properties that we're choosing for you. We have a few different levels of tour, uh, which I'll explain a little bit later. Uh, generally speaking, when you think about adventure travel, you might think, oh, it, I have to pack a backpack. I need to wear a hiking boot. I'm going to be staying in hostels. And that's really not what we do at G Adventures. We stay in these little boutique hotels. Uh, we use local services of local restaurants, local guides, and you can totally bring a wheelie suitcase if that's what you want to do. No problem there. We've included local dining experiences throughout the tours. 
Some of our tours have a little bit more meal inclusions, just depending how remote the destinations are. Other tours have that flexibility so that you can pick and choose where you want to dine. So sometimes the group stays together for dining. Other times you're able to go off on your own. So if you're traveling with your significant other and you want a, a date night, you can build that into the tour. If you're packing your kids along for the ride and you want a family night, uh, no one's going to be offended if you wanted to do that in one of our styles of tours. Or if you're traveling solo, our CEOs who are our local guides are there to organize the outing. So we have uh, lots of different dining options, lots of different company that you can choose to keep while you're exploring some of the greatest dishes on the planet. Uh, our tours are built to support local communities and economies, which means that we are making sure that everything that we do at G-Adventures benefits the local people. We support g for good projects all around the world, and we're working with local accommodation providers, local tour operators, to make sure that the tourist dollar is actually staying in destination. So in some of the ways that you can travel around the world, um, there is what they call leakage, which means that that money that you're spending is actually going back into maybe a US or a British company. But we want to make sure that the people in destination are benefiting from tourism. So that's really at the heart of everything that we do at G Adventures. Now, when you're booking a tour, security is also very important. We want to know that uh, your investment is protected. Um, it's just a deposit to confirm space on any G Adventures tour. And that deposit amount is $350 for most of our tours and $1,000 if you're going to the Arctic or Antarctica or Norway on our cruise. Now, these deposits are good for life, which means that it is, um, you have the utmost flexibility, I guess I'll say. So if something comes up and you need to change your travel plans, um, whatever that reason is, you can put your plans on hold, that deposit stays on file for you, and you can use it towards future travel. You can go to the same destination, do the same trip at a different date, or you could pick something completely different, or you can even pass along the deposit. So if you think that you're not going to use the tour um, in the future, then you can pass that deposit along to a friend or family member or someone down the street who might be interested in taking a trip. So the terms and conditions for booking travel right now are the most flexible that they have ever been. We even have a plan in place called Book with Confidence. So if you're booking a tour over the next 12 months, um, that tour, you can change your mind right up until 30 days prior. Our regular terms and conditions, you can change your mind right up until 60 days prior. So a little bit more flexibility given everything that's happening in the world, because we want to make sure that you're excited about the tour. We don't want you to be nervous, and we want you to know that we're going to take care of you in destination. Now, at G Adventures, we also don't charge any single supplements. I mentioned solo travelers earlier. That's a big part of our business. It's a really great way to travel personally as a solo female traveler, knowing that someone there in destination is looking out for you, that there's other travelers to share a meal with, which is such an enjoyable experience when you're on a tour. So we treat our solo travelers to the same benefits as the rest of the group, which means that there's no extra charges for you. Uh, we do a guaranteed twin share program. So we'll match you up in destination with another traveler of the same gender to share a room, or we give you the option to pay a little bit extra to have your own room throughout the duration of the tour. So that's really, really great way to experience destinations that maybe your partner doesn't want to go to, maybe your friends aren't interested, or you just have this really, um, special experience that you've always wanted to do. Um, don't let not having a travel companion hold you back and feel confident knowing that there's always going to be other solo travelers on tours with G-Adventures. Now our tours are structured so that we've got the highlights included, we've got a long list of optional activities for you to explore, but we also build in flexibility, freedom, and fun. So no matter what travel style you choose, the tours are well balanced with planned activities and the flexibility to do your own thing and make the experience your own. Now, travel with confidence is the way that, again, we're keeping you guys safe when you're booking onto a G Adventures tour. I do just want to mention that uh, since we restarted our tours back in September, we have had uh, over 100 small group adventures go to quite a few different corners of the world. So we're operating tours right now in destinations like Costa Rica, Egypt, Morocco, Tanzania, 
the Maldives, and we're looking to add new destinations to reopen the world. Uh, our new destinations for this summer, if anyone can get away, we've got our Greek sailing programs back up, our Croatia sail sailing, our Montenegro sailing. We're going to do a couple tours in the US and some through Mexico. So if you uh, have the option to, uh, to explore sooner rather than later, um, that is uh, available with G Adventures. Most of our travelers are planning for late 2021, and we have departure dates out right until the end of 2022, some even into 2023 if you're a super planner. Um, so travel with confidence is a way that we're keeping everyone safe. So from before you join us, when you arrive, while you're on tour, and before you leave, we have been endorsed by the World Travel and Tourism Council with their safe travel stamp, which means that our protocols are in alignment with this global organization. But tonight we're here to talk about where to next. I have a lot of destinations that I still wanna to get to, that's for sure. Some of them are included in the presentation tonight. So we're gonna start out uh, with our top destination for travelers, and that is in Peru. Um, Peru for G Adventures is really where you see uh, lots of people wearing G branded shirts like what I have, that's for sure. We've got two local offices and we're the biggest operator on the Inca Trail. Um, in fact, one in every three travelers who is doing the Inca Trail is doing it on a G Adventures tour. So it's the cradle to the Incan Empire. It's a beautiful, beautiful country um, with an incredible coastline, the beautiful Andes Mountains, and then the Amazon jungle there for all those creepy crawlies and for those nature loving travelers. Now, the Spaniards uh, actually took over lots of parts of Peru, but Machu Picchu was one of the areas that they never got to find. So Machu Picchu is in pretty decent shape uh, considering it is uh, very, very old. It was rediscovered back in the 19, 1911, um, but it's a 15th century UNESCO World Heritage Site. Now the tour that I wanted to feature tonight is our iconic Peru. So this is part of our National Geographic Journeys collection. It is where you can find 14 days full of adventure. It loops from Lima, it goes through to the Amazon jungle, up into Cusco, along the Inca Trail, if you're interested in doing the walk, or you could choose to do the train. We have a visit at Machu Picchu with what we call our Inca warriors. So those are local guides that know everything about the site. Um, from there, we train back to Cusco, and then we travel onwards to the shores of Lake Titicaca for a cultural experience. And that concludes our tour with a flight back to Lima. So really nice balance here. So you're getting to see the coast, the Andes and the Amazon. You see ancient UNESCO heritage sites, but you're also getting in to see the natural wonders of the Amazon jungle. Um, and here's a look at the map. So we have quite a few inclusions with this particular itinerary. In partnership with National Geographic, we have worked with their offices in Washington, uh, DC to come up with some really neat inclusions that really fit with the National Geographic brand. So a couple highlights in this one, we have a visit to the Cusco, pardon me, Cusco Planetarium. Um, so if you've seen any um, programs on the Incas or maybe you've been to Peru already, the Incas actually designed the entire site of Machu Picchu around the sun, the star and the moon, stars and the moon. So really amazing way to kind of put it all together by seeing the Cusco Planetarium with your local guide who's gonna tell you the history of Machu Picchu and a little bit of uh, kind of myth and mythology uh, about the construction of it. Another highlight that we have here is a traditional Andean experience at Urubamba. We are going into a community home uh, for lunch in Lake Titicaca, so meeting the locals. And we also get to go to a potato park, which might sound kind of random, but there are 4,000 types of potatoes in Peru. We'd love to support farmers and destinations. And this is a park that actually supports over 40 farming families in the region. So really nice experience. You get to taste potatoes and um, I don't know who doesn't love potatoes. Um, on that note, one of the great things about Peruvian cuisine is that you're guaranteed to have potato in almost every dish. Um, they are underestimated for their um, quality of cuisine and there is options to do some cooking classes too on this tour. Um, in terms of food, we also go into a community restaurant in the Sacred Valley that is a project that's supported by G Adventures. 
where we route a lot of our travelers, um, almost everyone actually that's doing any visit to Machu Picchu, whether they're taking the train or doing the Inca Trail, will visit the Parwa community. And this is another area where we're supporting the locals by providing them with hospitality training and also giving you guys uh, the chance to have a really amazing local lunch and the food is just divine in Peru. Now on the actual tour, uh, what you're getting is a couple of days in the Amazon jungle, a couple of days in Cusco, option to hike the Inca Trail, to see Machu Picchu, uh, visit Lake Titicaca, and then a little bit of time in Lima. Um, so we've got lots of things included, but also a little bit of free time. I'll just show you a little bit about the destination. So this is the G Lodge that we stay at in the jungle. To get here, we take, um, I'd like to call it the scenic route. <laughs> I think the journey is part of the fun when you're traveling. So from uh, to get to this area, you fly into a little tiny place called Puerto Maldonado. Uh, you travel by about 20 minutes by private vehicle. You continue upriver by motorized canoe for about two and a half hours. And then you're off the grid in the jungle. It's uh, located in the Tambopata rainforest and you have the chance to spot bird species right on the edge of the rivers, maybe look for the capybaras, which are the largest rodents in South America. And there's caiman, um, anaconda, and monkeys, of course. <laughs> um, the Tambopata rainforest holds the world record for the most bird sightings in one area. So if you're interested in, in nature watching, uh, this is definitely an area to pack your binoculars for. Um, the meals provided are all sourced locally from the farms in the Amazon. So again, we're contributing to the local economy and supporting uh, locals by buying services and goods off of them. Cusco is one of my favorite little cities located high in the Andes Mountains. Um, it's a beautiful colonial town with nearby ruins, museums, churches, a lively atmosphere and some really fantastic restaurants. Here, there's lots of options to do um, excursions, to visit archeological sites, to go rafting, mountain biking, or horseback riding, or even check out another Inca ruin. Now, when we're taking this tour, there is the option to do the Inca Trail. It's a total of 42 kilometers over the course of about three and a half days. So hiking upwards of 16 kilometers a day, fully supported though with someone carrying your belongings, setting up your tent, making you meals. It's much more comfortable camping than maybe we're all doing here in Canada. Um, the experience is incredible and it's award-winning and recognized by the local government in Peru for, and we've been recognized for such a, doing such a great job in bringing tourists to Peru. The sights along the way can't be beat. The train is beautiful, but you won't be able to see this unless you put your feet one after another and hike your butt upwards along the Inca Trail to get to Machu Picchu. Um, the prize at the end is definitely worth it. You get up super early, do a little bit of a hike in the morning, and then you get to follow the local guide around Machu Picchu. Um, for those that aren't interested in doing the hike, the train ride allows you to spend a little bit more time in Cusco, so lots of time for optionals optional activities there. You take the train up to Aguas Calientes, and then you're spending one night in Aguas Calientes, and you take a shuttle up to Machu Picchu where you meet the rest of the group for the tour of Machu Picchu. So with our local guide, we get insight into the site of Machu Picchu, including the history of the, um, the empty cave, the temple of the sun, the temple of the water. There was a room of three windows, and you get time to sit and take in the energy of this 15th century site and you get a stamp, which is always really nice. Um, for those doing the train, um, you get to do the train both ways. Uh, for those doing the hike, you get to do the train one way. So you take this down, you don't have to hike back. We're not gonna put your hiking boots back on. You take a relaxing train ride back to Cusco. From there onwards, we go down to Lake Titicaca, which is the highest lake in the world. Uh, on the shores of Lake Titicaca, you'll find uh, Peruvians in traditional clothing. Inca is actually in traditional clothing. On the lake, you'll find these really very interesting islands that are made out of reeds. So we have two days here on in this area at Lake Titicaca, where we have a guided boat tour to visit the islands of Uros and Tequili. We try a local Peruvian lunch. Uh, we learn about traditional weaving in the area. We talk to the locals. Uh, we enjoy an overnight uh, stay with a host family and a chance to learn about life in this area. It's a really beautiful balanced itinerary. 
we're going to jump onwards to another destination on a lot of people's bucket lists, and that is the Galapagos Islands. Um, this is an area where we operate three different small ships. They hold a maximum of 16 travelers in each. On board, we have level three naturalist guides and a full crew to support the experience. Um, in addition to the cruise-based itineraries, we also do land-based tours. So if you are not interested in overnighting on a ship, you can do a stay in the Galapagos where you're flying over from Quito, the capital of Ecuador, and you stay in hotels on the islands. Um, I've had the good fortune to do both, and I think that they're both actually amazing ways to explore this part of the world. They hit a little bit different price points. The land tour is a little bit lower priced. Um, and then with our ship-based program, we have three different levels of ships. So we have an entry-level ship, a tourist class ship, and we do a catamaran that's brand new. So I'm going to show you a little bit about the catamaran because this is a new one coming to G-Adventures. It's going to be ready to go for 2022. Uh, we just released dates out for 2023 as well. So for those that are planning something epic and amazing for next year or the year after, this is one you should have your eye on. Um, the Galapagos itself is located 965 kilometers off the coast of Ecuador in the middle of <laughs> the ocean. It's a series of uh, 13 major islands in the archipelago, lots and lots of minor islands, and it's where you'll go to see some incredible wildlife. The itineraries that we offer on the catamaran are set up in 10-day packages. So what you get in the package for this is the flights to and from the Galapagos. So first off, actually, we start with an overnight in Quito, the capital of Ecuador, where you'd fly into. Um, flight to and from the Galapagos is included. Um, you are overnighting on the ship, so all of your meals are included. And then everything uh, in terms of the excursions is also included. So we do daily landings. We also do daily snorkeling excursions. So again, the Galapagos Islands are home to uh, the world's most remote um, wildlife, wildlife experience. So that you can think of this as like a safari at sea. So if you've had the idea of an African safari or if you've experienced an African safari before, this is a really great next tour for you. Um, the islands are a little bit different. So the Eastern route uh, visits more areas with human population because there's population in Santa Cruz. Um, and then down in on San Cristobal. And then the one in the West um, visits a little bit more remote uh, out on the outside of uh, Isabella Island. And what you get to see once you're there are some just amazing wildlife experiences. A lot of the animals in this area don't have any natural predators. So they get really close to you. So you might have to take a couple of steps back to stay out of their zone. Um, there's lots of sea lions in the area. What you may have seen before is the blue-footed booby. This is what we call the uh, iconic bird of the Galapagos Islands. You have a number of opportunities to see them hanging out in different coastal environments around the archipelago. Um, they don't have any predators again, so you can get pretty close to them as long as they don't have their new ones really close by. And of course, G Adventures has an animal welfare policy, so we like to encourage you to observe from a, a very safe distance. Um, the bird life in the area is unique. Uh, the finches are actually what Charles Darwin perfected his theory of evolution on because they were unique to each of the islands. They had different um, sounds that they made. They had different beaks. They were eating different uh, foods. So that is based basically the very, very fast forward version of his theory of evolution. Um, but the finches are known for their diversity in beak form and function. Most photographed crab on the planet, I think, is the Sally Lightfoot crab. It's one of the saltwater crab species. They also have really cool land iguanas in this area and the marine iguanas. So they look like little dragons, uh, but what you see on their head is the crest of the salt because they swim in the sea. So they eat the algae and they eat the seaweed from the bottom of the ocean floor. And then they come up onto the land and the salt uh, crests and dries onto their little heads. Um, if you're excited about uh, ocean life, we have lots of opportunity to do snorkeling in this area. The Galapagos green turtle is uh, commonly seen in a few places in the world. Um, in the Galapagos, they're the only species of sea turtle to nest. So there's females that are returning uh, several times to lay their eggs in this region. So you can often see them when you're snorkeling. Um, on land, you have the chance to walk with these gentle giant, giants, the land tortoises. 
Um, they can live up to 180 years old, I think was the oldest. Um, and they sit almost a meter high. So pretty remarkable experience to, to see them in the wild and in the sanctuaries that we visit on Santa Cruz. Uh, the experience is on the new ship for G Adventures, the Reina Silvia Voyager, which I mentioned will be ready uh, for sailing in 2022. We're hoping to get some departures in for late 2021, uh, but guaranteed to be out uh, running in 2022. It's currently under construction, which as you can see from the computer animation here, um, but we're working on getting this one back onto schedule um, because it was a little bit delayed with COVID. So what you can find on board is a jacuzzi on top. We've got uh, cabins, eight cabins, so 16 passengers can cruise on the ship and the naturalist guide is there to answer questions morning, day and night. Um, the cabins are all comfor comfortable, twin share or double accommodation. Actually, I actually think we do even have a couple of single rooms on this new ship. Um, and then in the days we're doing lectures in the morning and then a recap in the night in this really nice lounge area. So we're very excited to have this ready to go for 2022 and 2023. We're gonna go to Central America now for a destination Costa Rica that you may have been to before, but um, everyone that I know that's been to Costa Rica absolutely loved it and wants to go back. And I wanted to share with you one of our uh, travel styles that we do have at G Adventures and that's our family tours. So if you're interested in packing the kids along on an adventure or packing the grandkids or taking all of the family, um, this would be a really great tour to do. So this is a real life kind of jungle experience for the kids. Um, there's educational lessons in um, ecology and biology to be had that won't be found in a textbook. It's a nine day tour out of San Jose where basically we're spending the days exploring. So learning about flora and fauna that are in the cloud forest, learning about volcanoes at Arenal, visiting national parks, um, getting active by doing horseback options. Uh, they can do zip lining, uh, rappelling, canyoneering, uh, swimming, a little bit of kind of body surfing, and there's horseback riding and biking and paddling. There's all sorts of activities for, for kids and for families to enjoy together. Um, with our family tours at G Adventures, the minimum age is six. Uh, we do a group size on this one of 20, so we can accommodate kind of four to five families on this, um, or we could do it as a private tour. So if you have um, a family that you like to travel with, or maybe you have a big family, then we can do this as a private tour as long as there's at least eight of you. So something to kind of think about for, for travel in the next year or two. On this tour, we have uh, lots included. We do a tortilla making class and local lunch in La Fortuna. Uh, La Fortuna is the site of the Volcan Arenal. There's also a beautiful lake there where we do stand up paddle boarding and kayaking, which is included with lessons, of course. Uh, we have a guided cloud forest walk at night in Monteverde for the brave. Uh, we have a free day in Monteverde with options to do zip lining, canopy tours, horseback riding, or visit a butterfly garden. And then in Manuel Antonio, we have some time to explore the beach, to do some uh, kayaking, surf lessons at Catamaran for sunset, or just relaxation. So as with all G Adventures tours, all the accommodation is included. For the family programs, we're using hotels that can accommodate different sizes of families. So not to be concerned if you're um, a family of three, a family of four, a family of five, family of six, whatever it is, uh, we can accommodate that. Um, on this one, the transfers are included from the airport to make it super easy if you're wrangling kiddos. And we've got breakfast all included and with options to, to add on kind of lunch and dinners in destination. So a couple of things that you get to see and do, lots of hands-on experiences also with the family tours, just to make sure that no one gets bored. Uh, but there's plenty for the parents or grandparents or aunties and uncles to, to keep busy with as well. Um, first day we go out to, from San Jose out to La Fortuna for a lesson in tortilla making, some food included, and we meet this lovely lady in the back named Donna Mara uh, to learn all about how to make tortillas. In La Fortuna, we have a lot of activities to pick and choose from. So again, river rafting, rappelling down waterfalls, uh, floating in canals uh, to look for caiman, which are kind of like baby alligators. Um, there's, there's no time to be bored here. 
Um, on the lake, we can get out. We do an included stand-up paddleboarding lesson, and uh, we also do a kayaking tour on Lake Arenal. The night walk is probably the highlight, I think, for a lot of the kids. So we do a, a one and a half to two hour night walk in the cloud forest to learn about the nocturnal animals in the area. Um, insects, reptiles, amphibians, all the creepy crawly things that you may or may not want to see um, are really exciting for kids. So you never know what you're going to see here, but the guides do a really good job of finding uh, the most exciting creatures for the kids at night. Um, also in Monte Verde, we've got a free day to explore, so lots of fun to be had for the whole family in this area. Wildlife to see, and as with every good tour, we end on the beach uh, before we go back to San Jose. So we've got hiking options here, wildlife viewing, um, and we do an included hike with our guide that goes right into the National Park. So this is our family option. We do have tours that are really similar. Um, if you don't want to pack the kids, um, look for our Costa Rica quest. It follows a very similar path. We're going to jump over and talk about our cold destination now, because this is one that we seem to get a lot of inquiry for at G Adventures, and it's Iceland. Um, I've personally been there four times now. I see, I know what the hype is all about. It's beautiful. If you like really remote uh, landscapes, um, if you're maybe not a fan of trees, they don't have big forests, <laughs> but you get waterfalls, you have really incredible mountain scenes, um, they have beautiful horses for some reason. Um, Iceland's a great destination to add to your bucket list. It's also pretty easy to get to from Canada with Iceland Air. Um, so if you're looking for a fast trip in Iceland, it is a destination that does hit the pocketbook a little bit more like any of those Scandinavian countries. They have a, a higher kind of price point uh, for exploration. So we've packed a lot into a short tour to make it affordable for our audience. So in this tour, we have a chance to see geysers, lagoons, black sand beaches, um, puffins, hopefully, um, the penguins of the north. Um, but you definitely need to just pack your sense of adventure for this kind of a tour, because it's not where you pack a swimsuit and a beach towel to go on adventure. This is a little bit more rugged. You need to pack in layers because even in the, the peak of summer, it's still not tropical temperatures in Iceland. It's not freezing though either. Now in this tour, we follow the ring road. So this is the road that goes pretty much the whole way around Iceland. Um, we start in Reykjavik and I haven't practiced my Icelandic pronunciation. So I do apologize to anyone on this uh, presentation that is uh, fluent in Icelandic um, because it's, it's a very difficult language to learn. So in the north, we go to Ekureyri, uh, where we have the chance to do some whale watching. We visit Godafoss. In Lake Maivatin, we have the chance to do some bird watching. Um, from there, we explore lava formations on the way to Detifoss waterfall. We do a local guest house stay in Borgafjordur. Uh, from there, we travel down to Hafen to see Vatnajökull Glacier. <laughs> we also see the Jökulsleren Glacier Lagoon at Hafen, um, which is part of the Skaftafell National Park. Um, on the route from Hafen to Vik, we stop off at Seljalan Foss, which is a waterfall that you can walk under, which is in the one, uh, the previous photo. And then we loop back towards Reykjavik through the Golden Circle, where you see Gulf Foss, um, Geyser, Hot Springs, and Thingvillir National Park. So lots of really interesting words to say there. I'm going to share with you some of the photos. So this is from the whale watching up in the north at sunset. Um, it's super remote in the north because a lot of visitors to Iceland really just see uh, Reykjavik and go to the Blue Lagoon and that's it. A lot of people do it as a quick stopover, but there's so much more to see if you have the chance to get outside of Reykjavik. Um, in the north, this is the Maivatn Detifoss Cliff. We've got uh, Borgafjordur where we stay in a local guest house. Uh, penguin, penguins, not penguins, <laughs> puffins, the penguins of the Arctic. Uh, this is the Glacier Lagoon. They actually have an amphibious uh, water vehicle here. So you could do a cruise on the lagoon that starts on the land, which is something that's different. Um, nearby, there's Diamond Beach, where you see these like glistening icebergs that have washed up on the black shores of a beautiful beach. And you have the option to, uh, to walk on that beach too. And then this is uh, Gulf Foss. This, this is one of the highlights of the 
um, golden circle in my recommendation to you if you are a meat eater is to make sure to try the lamb soup at Golfos. It is ridiculously delicious. Somewhere a little bit warmer, uh, Egypt is one of the destinations that we've actually been running tours in recently. Um, this is one of our tours that we have put a little plus on the end. What that means for 2021 is that we're running it with a smaller group size. We are offering kind of more personal, personal space, so more options for people to have their own room. Uh, we've organized for um, daily deep cleaning of the vehicles that we're traveling in. We do assigned seating. We have lots and lots of things in place to make sure that people are uh, traveling safely if they're choosing to travel this year. Um, one of the great things about this itinerary is that it's a nice mix of a lot of experiences. So we do the guided tour of the pyramids and the Sphinx. We go up into Alexandria, which isn't always included in, in Egypt tours. So nice chance to see a uh, beautiful uh, ocean, to check out the catacombs in the library at Alexandria. Uh, we are including the Egyptian Museum, which is has been revamped and opened in Cairo. Um, it looks amazing. There are a ton of programs on Egypt on Netflix right now. So <laughs> I've been really into um, moving this up my personal bucket list. We fly down to Aswan. We have a, an excursion here where we're going into a Nubian village where we have a local traditional meal in Aswan. We are doing an excursion out to Abu Simbel by, uh, by vehicle and with a bit of an entourage. And then we're going in to see a little bit about the, the tour, or sorry, we're visiting the site of Abu Simbel to understand the, the kind of amazing engineering feat that was that moved the site of Abu Simbel to where it is, which I'll tell you about in just a moment. Um, we are going on a three-day Nile cruise, three-night Nile cruise, pardon me, on um, with a, a really beautiful ship. So it's not just our G Adventures group that's joining it. We will be joining other travelers on this cruise on the Nile. And at Luxor, we visit uh, Kambombo Temple, the Valley of the Kings, and some of the temples at Karnak. Um, Cairo, hot spot for anyone visiting Egypt, of course, but we want to get out of Cairo and see what else there is to offer. Alexandria is the most Mediterranean city, a little bit cooler temperatures there with uh, water. Um, and it was founded back in 315 BC, which is a shocking long time ago, <laughs> coming from a very young country like Canada. Uh, Abu Simbel, what I was trying to say before is we travel by caravan there and back. So we have um, our little vehicle and support vehicles with us. And it's a bit of a rough journey. <laughs> A rugged journey, not rough, rugged journey. Uh, we have a two hour tour at the site. And what we're talking about with this site is um, the really interesting history of it, but also the feat of engineering. So uh, the temples were built by Ramses II between 1274 and 1244 BC, and they would be under a lake if they hadn't been moved. So that is one of the just feats of engineering um, that just one of many, I guess, in Egypt, in addition to the amazing pyramids. Um, at Kambombo, we can see the crocodile god temple. At Luxor, we see the Karnak temples. And this is a great experience because the, throughout the journey, you're going to be traveling with one of our local guides who is an Egyptologist. So not only are they from Egypt um, and know the kind of background of the history of Egypt and the culture, but they've actually studied to be Egyptologists too, which is just amazing. Um, next up on my list, uh, a couple other destinations to round up the evening is Morocco. Um, so it's beaches and Berbers, uh, Medinas and mosques, souks and sand dunes is what we like to say. Uh, when we think of Morocco, it's really got an exotic feel um, and it's fascinated travelers for a very, very long time. It's also affordable. It's not too far to get to from Europe. Um, and if you remember any of the French that you learned when you were a kid in school in Canada, um, it'll come in handy because uh, they do speak French. They speak English too, but they speak French. <laughs> um, so there's lots of things to see and do in Morocco. I just want to tell you a little bit about our highlights of Morocco tour. So this one is 15 days. It's Casablanca to Marrakesh. My recommendation for Morocco is to do a two week tour. Um, I did a shorter tour and it was um, 
it was a great tour, but it, there's a lot to see in the country. So I'm going to definitely have to go back to see the rest of what I didn't get to see on my Casbahs and Deserts tour of Morocco. So on this particular tour, this is really great because you get to see the Casbahs and the deserts, but you'll also get to see the spice markets, the cities. You get to do a camel ride into the Sahara. You visit Tangier, which is um, the highest point in Morocco, closest to Europe. Um, you're visiting Chefdechouen, the Blue City. You visit the Roman ruins at Vlublius. Um, get into Fez for a really interesting visit through the Medinas. We have a local lunch that's included in Meknes uh, on the way to Fez. So meet these lovely, lovely women that are working so hard to prepare this like delicious Moroccan cuisine um, and to support their families. We G Adventures likes to bring our travelers there. And um, funds from that lunch program go back into the community to help with education. So it's really amazing experience. Um, on this tour, we go down to Merzouka where we're getting out into the Sahara Desert. So you can do a camel ride or four by four excursion. We are um, staying in a really cool property on the, sh on the shores of the desert, on the edge of the desert. Uh, we go to Tadra Gorge to cool down, lower temperatures. The water there is coming off the Atlas Mountains. Um, Ait Banadu is at Kasba, uh, that's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So we learn about that. You might've seen it in a show like Game of Thrones before. Um, and then we go onwards into the high Atlas Mountain. We stay in a, a geet, a mountain geet. We do a mountain hike. Uh, we head to the coast for a little bit of ocean time at Essaouira before we round out our tour in Marrakesh. And you can see quite a few stops on this journey. There is a lot to see and do in Morocco. Um, this one is uh, incredible value as well for, uh, for the spend. I mean, the 15 day tour in Morocco is really great, really well priced. Casablanca is the largest city. So this is the Hassan number two mosque. It is the second largest functioning mosque in Africa and the seventh largest in the world. Uh, the site of Volubilius is a little unexpected. So these are Roman ruins in Northern Africa. This is another UNESCO World Heritage Site. So you're checking off quite a few actually on this tour. Um, the site at Chepchechouin, it's um, beautiful. I'm sure you've seen photos of it in travel programs. The city is whitewashed in different shades of blue. Um, it's got mountains in the background and really, really beautiful. The place to go is the Spanish mosque where you get to see sites like this um, at sunset. And that's one of the things that we like to organize for our travelers in this experience. So if you've been to Santorini in Greece, you'll know that they, um, they paint all the roofs the same color of blue. And I'm convinced that this is a, a similar thing in, uh, in this part of Morocco. Um, Fez is one of Morocco's most interesting cities. So we have a little bit of time here on arrival to explore on your own, to check out a hammam, so a traditional Moroccan spa, if you'd like, um, or you can get right into it and visit the tanneries. So this is where they're dyeing the leather goods. And um, you see this from the, the balcony of a leather shop in, in Fez. And of course, our team's really good at finding those beautiful photos that everyone wants to capture when they're traveling. Um, in Fez and the Medinas, there are 350 mosques that are still in use today. So you can kind of like peek your head in a little bit, but not disturb and not to um, step in unless you've been invited to join. But really beautiful uh, architecture and tile work in this area of the world. Um, in the desert, we've got options to explore by foot, by camel, or take a four by four excursion. Um, the camel ride is really fun at sunset. Um, it's a pretty special experience. You're led by local Berber guides and then they go back uh, with you to the, the shores, I kept saying, the shores of the desert um, to the property that we stay at, which is just unbelievable. Looks like a sandcastle to me. Um, on site, we do a local presentation with some singing and some uh, storytelling and some music being played. And it's a pretty amazing experience when you're under the stars in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Uh, the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Ait Ben Adu is another highlight for travelers here. It also looks like a sandcastle. Um, this is the one with uh, one of the Kasbahs uh, in Morocco where the walls are really still quite intact. The Kasbah still houses a few families, um, but most have moved out and are living in neighboring villages. Um, this area is actually really uh, popular for filming. 
So there's a, a big studio production area in an area called um, Wazirzati, uh, where they've used um, the, the landscape and the sites for filming Game of Thrones and Gladiator. Marrakesh, I guess to skip a couple things because 15 day tours doesn't fit into my presentation. <laughs> so Marrakesh, great area to end the tour, lots of great shopping, great food, night markets, um, nice, nice way to wrap it up. And it's also where you get to see where the ancient culture and the kind of modern uh, mix in Morocco. We're gonna go a little bit south. I think I have just two other destinations to mention this night, tonight. Uh, South Africa is one that we're seeing lots and lots of interest in for 2022 and 2023. Um, so if it's on your radar, one of the things that I've been saying too is that um, because the booking terms and conditions are so flexible, if you are thinking about it, it's good to secure your space right now because I think that with the pent up demand for travel, uh, space is going to be an issue probably for 2022, especially with our small group experiences. Because on this particular tour, we have space for just 14 and it will sell out for sure. And so this is the tour that I always love to feature. It is our Explore Southern Africa. It's also from our National Geographic collection, where it's 12 days from Cape Town to Victoria Falls. So on this tour, you have the chance to see the big five on safari, but you'll also get like wine tasting in Cape Town, really incredible seafood dinners, um, and you get to experience Victoria Falls, which as a natural phenomenon and lover of waterfalls, it's pretty spectacular. On this tour, we've got lots included down in the Cape area. So we're staying in um, a locally owned hotel in Cape Town. We visit Kristenbosch Botanical Gardens. We have an excursion out to sea at Cape Point where you find the penguins uh, at Boulders Beach. There's options to do wine tasting in the um, Stellenbosch or French Hook areas, which are just outside of Cape Town. We do a traditional South African braai or barbecue uh, in Johannesburg with our local hosts. We go out into Kruger National Park where we're staying at a lodge that has three giraffe that live on site. Uh, we have uh, time in Karangwe Private Reserve to do safaris in the morning and early evening because that's when the animals are most active and all the safaris are included of course so we're doing a couple safaris in Kruger and a couple safaris in Karangwe um, both in open air vehicles um, both accompanied by a certified safari specialists. Uh, we do the panoramic route drive from Johannesburg out to Cape Town which goes to Blyde River Canyon which is just a, a really incredible rock formation. Um, and then from the safari area, we go up to Vic Falls where we have a tour of Victoria Falls. We meet a local family and we have an included local family dinner. So on this tour, we're staying in quite a variety of accommodations. We have um, two nights in guest house, five nights in hotels, two nights in comfort, comfortable safari camp, and then two nights in comfortable tents or chalet. And the tents, I'll tell you, they're not like, camping tents, they are permanent tents, there are hot showers, there's flushing toilets, um, really, really beautiful properties. The sites that you get to see, Cape Town is one of my favorite cities. If you haven't been, please go, it's amazing. Um, it's got uh, stunning beauty, kind of uh, harsh history, um, really full of lots of optimism. If you are a sports fanatic, they love rugby there. Um, you can get into some of the great restaurants in, um, in the waterfront. You can hike Cape uh, Table Mountain in the background. You can go out to some of the beaches, or you can spend time with the penguins. Um, Blyde River Canyon is that rock formation area that I mentioned between Johannesburg and Kruger, but what everyone's going to South Africa for is the wildlife. So in Kruger National Park, there's 19,000 square kilometers to explore, 147 species. So they have more species of large mammals than any other park on the continent. And that includes lots of cats. Oops, let me go back here. Lots of cats. So if you wanna see lions, leopards, and cheetahs, um, this area of the world is a really great spot to visit. This is the vehicles that we're using in Karangwe. So open air vehicles, we've got the bait out front. <laughs> Just joking, he's a tracker. <laughs> he's looking actually for footprints. Um, so if there aren't any animals around, uh, he's sitting in, he or she is sitting in the front, looking on the ground to see where, where this, where the animals are. So they can guide us uh, to show 
these incredible creatures to all of our travelers. And so everyone can kind of check off that list uh, of seeing the big five animals. Also in Karangwe, they have a cheetah population that they're reintroducing back into nature. So we learn a little bit more about that in a talk with one of the National Geographic researchers that is on site for us. And this tour ends at Victoria Falls, what a beautiful site. You can do a bungee swing, you can go rafting, you can do a sunset cruise, or you can take a helicopter ride um, to see this incredible site. The last destination I wanted to include in the presentation tonight is another cold one, um, but it's not super cold and it's Antarctica. We travel there in Canada's winter, so it's probably warmer in Antarctica because it's their summer than it is here at home in Canada. So temperatures range, they kind of hover around zero, to be honest, a couple of degrees below, which is pretty tropical when you think of some of the temperatures that we see in our winter months. Um, this is the um, furthest destination that you can really go to. There's no permanent population on Antarctica. Um, we are traveling there by G Expedition. So this is our purpose-built expedition ship. It's small uh, compared to a cruise line because it holds 134 travelers. Um, it is equipped for cruising these waters and it's a really amazing onboard experience. So on board, we've got five different categories of cabin. We have a sun deck on top, which is funny because we only go to cold places with this ship. We have a Lonely Planet stocked lounge. We do expedition style lectures in our lounge. Um, we have enough space for everyone to dine together. No one needs to dress like a penguin if they don't want to, or they're welcome to if they're interested in doing that. That's totally okay too. So we cruise out of um, Ushuaia in Argentina. The main trip that we do is 11 days, but we actually have one that's longer that is 21 days that goes to South Georgia Island as well. Um, this season runs from late October to kind of mid-March. Um, this is a true adventure. As you see, there aren't any real stopping points on the map, which means that our expedition team has a full, full control over the itinerary. So what we're doing is looking on for, for the wildlife, of course, making sure that the weather is okay for the areas that we're going into. And we're gonna do our best to show our travelers um, the most incredible life-changing experience in Antarctica. So what we're looking for is uh, whales, penguins, uh, seals mostly. And what we'll get is some really incredible landscapes, uh, some chances to see um, icebergs passing by, and of course, to set foot on Antarctica, which is guaranteed in all of our departures. So with the ship that we're using, uh, it is owned by G Adventures. It is expedition. Uh, we do shore excursions, which are typically two to three hours long. And so we're, we try to do at least one a day. Sometimes we get in two, it just depends on the weather. We've got um, a mudroom in the lower level. So that's where all of these travelers are moving in and out of. Um, we fasten the staircase on there. We've got people holding you on either side, so you're not going to fall into the ocean. So don't worry about that. <laughs> it's really stable. You're getting in and out of zodiacs that are are graded for expedition style cruising, um, and also the zodiacs are named after. Just kind of a side note: um, the provinces and territories of Canada. So um, you can hop in the Alberta zodiac if you are if you've got the timing right. We include boots for everyone. We also include jackets to keep. The jackets are three in one and you can take them home and they are really nice and cozy and designed for this style of adventure. Now, the ship itself, um, those bright orange things, those are our, our lifeboats. We've got flotation suits for everyone. It is got the utmost level of safety on board for our audience. Um, the guides that work for us are cream of the cream. They're just amazing human beings. They've been cruising in the polar regions for 40, 50 years. Some of them, some of them are younger and new to the expedition cruising. Then they come with uh, lots of conversations with our, our kind of like uh, expert guides on board. So we've got historians, geography, geographers, pardon me, geologists, um, ornithologists, we have marine biologists joining us, and they all bring a different perspective on visiting this amazing destination. Um, on this style of experience, no two days are the same, no two cruises are the same. We have a lot of people that repeat and go back, 
um, because it's really just different with uh, the wildlife experience that you have. Um, what we're aiming for is to see these guys. And I mean, you really can't not see them. They're like the zebras in Africa. You are guaranteed to see a zebra when you go to Africa. It doesn't matter where you go. In Antarctica, you're guaranteed to see a penguin and the gentoos are like the zebras. Um, they're everywhere. There are other animals though. There are albatross that join you on the journey all the way from Ushuaia down across the Drake Passage. Uh, there are whales in certain seasons. Um, we can find whales usually throughout the season, but better whale sighting is, uh, is done in the months of February and March. Uh, in the area, we can see minke whales, humpbacks, sperm, and orca whales. On land, we see fur seals. We also see weddell seals, and we see leopard seals. And these are like the orcas um, of the land. So the orcas are like the biggest predators in Antarctica, and then the leopard seal are pretty ferocious. They like to have penguins for lunch. But back to the penguins, these guys are the cute creatures that everyone wants to see when they visit Antarctica. I mean, how can you blame them? If you're looking for baby penguin season, definitely go in January. That is when the penguins are born and you can get shots like this. Um, but wherever you look, you're guaranteed to see penguins. <laughs> On board, we've got an open bridge policy, which is amazing if you want to learn about the navigation that it takes to get to some of these remote areas of the world. Uh, we have ridiculously beautiful landscapes that we get our ship right up into. We've got options for you, so if you want to participate in the excursions, you're welcome to, or you can relax on the ship and take photos. We do some hikes with our expedition guides. We also do some zodiac cruises, and you really can't see this anywhere else on the planet. So please put Antarctica on your travel bucket list if it's not already there. So that's just the highlight of some of the destinations that we wanted to feature tonight. We do have brochures available. Check in with your uh, Expedia Cruises agent for access to our brochures. We've got our National Geographic Journeys brochure and our Earth brochure available now and they can have them shipped right to your doorstep. So we'd like to encourage you to think about booking now for travel later. Our policies are really flexible. It's just deposits, uh, planning is available. We wanna make sure that you're locking in space for 2022 or 2023. As I mentioned, um, based on our booking trends, it's gonna be one heck of a busy year next year. So if you're thinking about it, uh, start planning now to make sure that you get the destination you want, the time of year you want, and the actual itinerary you want. So that's it for me. I just want to say thank you so much for everyone for tuning in. And Susan, do you want to wrap it up? You bet I do. Thank you. Just, oh, and it looks like we might have a question. Uh, oh, great presentation. And Erin was awesome. Yes, Daryl, we really think that she is as well. She's been um, a great supporter of our office. Uh, yeah, and were those great? I just don't know which one I want to go to first um your africa trip looks amazing though i have to say so does anybody have any questions um you can throw it in a chat and if not then make sure you reach out to your to your experts with expedia cruises here in red deer and we can answer any of your questions that you uh, might have with g adventures and all their amazing destinations that they go to so Thank you again, Erin, for uh, joining us tonight. It was a great, great hour, and uh, we appreciate your time. And thank you, everybody, for joining, and have a great evening. Bye. Bye.